It was the graveyard shift at Harlan Electronics. The kind of job that pays the bills, but sucks the life out of you. I'm just a guy in my late 20s, trying to make it through the night without dozing off. I really hate my job, but if there's one thing I've learned, it's that the night brings out the creepiest stuff. Now Harlan Electronics is located in this ancient building that's been standing since who knows when. You could smell the decades of dust when you walked in, like the place had secrets embedded in its very foundation. My role was very simple, night security. Make sure no one's trying to pull off a heist or mess with anything inside. Easy money, right? I liked it because it allowed me to focus on other things or even catch up on some sleep if I wanted to. I had been working there for just a few months and aside from a few creaks and old building noises, nothing really eventful ever happened. One night, around 2 a.m., things started to get really weird when I was doing my rounds on the third floor. The fluorescent lights flickered above, which really wasn't too out of the ordinary for an old building, but this time it felt different. That's when I heard it. A low, distant hum. Harlan Electronics is supposed to be shut down at this hour. No machines running, and definitely no one in the building except for me. But there it was, this ominous hum that sent chills down my spine. I followed the sound and it led me to the old assembly room at the end of the hall. The door creaked as I pushed it open, revealing rows of dusty old computers. And in the middle of it all was an outline of an old man, hunched over a desk, tinkering with some wires. His back was to me, and I felt a knot forming in my stomach. At first, I wasn't sure if what I was looking at was even real, or if my mind was playing tricks on me. I approached slowly and called out, Hey, who the hell are you? The guy froze, then slowly turned his head. Through the darkness, I could see his hollow and sunken eyes as they stared right through me. That's when I knew I was looking at a real person. He said nothing, but turned slowly towards me. My heart pounded as he whispered, they're watching. I'm not sure who that guy was or what he wanted, but I wasn't going to hang around to find out. I bolted out of there, heart racing as the fear rushed through me. Who the hell was that guy? And who's watching? Was this even real? The whole encounter left me with more questions than answers. I decided to call the police once I got to my apartment. They searched the building, but to my surprise, they found nothing. This left me no choice but to accept that it must have been in my head. Maybe the lack of sleep let my nerves get the better of me. The next night, I went back to work, but I couldn't shake the feeling of dread. I kept replaying that old man's words in my head. They're watching. It sounded like some cryptic warning from a B-list horror movie, but I couldn't let it go. The night went on as usual, and at around 3 a.m., I decided to check the security footage from last night. Maybe I'd catch a glimpse of the mysterious man or figure out what he was doing in there. As I scanned through the footage, my eyes widened. I saw myself opening the door of the assembly room, but there was no one there. I was just watching myself stare into an empty room before bolting out of there. I felt a cold sweat forming on my forehead. Was I losing my mind? Suddenly the hum from the previous night echoed loudly in my ears, and that's when I realized I wasn't alone. But I was too terrified to go back to that creepy room. I continued just going to work as normal for another week or so because I didn't know what else to do. Days turned into nights, and the paranoia ate away at my sanity. In every shadow, I felt those watching eyes that stared into my soul. I started avoiding the third floor altogether, sticking to the well-lit areas and watching over my shoulder wherever I went. But curiosity got the better of me. I had to know if he was still there. One night, fueled by a mix of fear and recklessness, I decided to confront my fear. I crept up to the old assembly room, heart pounding in my chest. The door groaned as I pushed it open and peered inside. There he was, huddled around the computer with his face hidden in the shadows. What are you doing? Who are you? I demanded, my voice shaking. The hum grew louder, drowning out my words. He turned towards me and I swear, I felt my soul freeze. It was him, the same old man from before, his sunken eyes now piercing through the darkness. They're coming, he whispered. Suddenly the room was plunged into pitch darkness. I fumbled for my flashlight, heart racing like a jackhammer. When the light flickered back on, the room was empty. 
No old man, no mysterious hum, just me and the lingering smell of dust. That was the breaking point. I couldn't handle this madness anymore. The next day I handed in my resignation, not even bothering to give any explanation. I just needed to get out of there, away from those watching eyes and the haunting hum. Years have passed now, but the memories of Harlan Electronics still cling to me like a shadow. Sometimes in the dead of the night, I swear I can still hear that ominous hum, a reminder of the mysteries I never unraveled. I may have left that job far behind, but the fear, the questions and the paranoia, they never left me. The school I was working at, Monroe High, stood as a weathered relic of days long gone. And so did I. I grew old with this place and saw many waves of students and staff members coming and going throughout the years. I was hired as a caretaker, but I was much more than that. I took care of the building as if it were my own home. Most of the time, my duties would end not long after the staff went home for the day. Sometimes, however, I had to work night shifts when it came to some of the bigger jobs around the school. Usually, it would be repairs that couldn't be done during the day. The shifts were slow and kind of annoying, but luckily I didn't have to do it too often. While doing my rounds one night, I noticed a leak in one of the pipes that led to the swimming pool. I didn't think anything of it, as it was an old and unused pool caked with layers of algae that had built up over time. I know what you're thinking, but to be honest with you, I don't know why the school management decided to keep the pool room locked up and untouched for the longest time but that is a question beyond my pay grade. Putting these thoughts out of my head, I got to work. The door leading to the pool room was one of those heavy double doors with see-through glass windows where you can peer inside. I switched on the lights, but the dim fluorescent bulb struggled to pierce the shadows, casting the room into a half light. The room itself was run down, broken tiles everywhere, and a faint smell of chlorine that I imagine had been lingering there for ages in this poorly ventilated room. It was hot inside, and the air hung heavy. For some reason that night, the thought of being in the school alone made me really uncomfortable. A shiver crept down my spine as I had the sobering realization. I was all alone. As I kneeled to address the leak, I started to wonder. It wasn't just the cold and the abandoned atmosphere that unnerved me. It was the untold history of this forsaken place. Monroe High was a special school, mainly working with children with severe disabilities meaning that once in a while, tragedies happened. The thought of this made me feel uneasy, and my mind drifted to a darker place. I tried to erase these thoughts that were now clouding my head and focus on finishing the job I started. I got distracted eventually by the complexity of the job and forgot all about my dark thoughts. Hours later, when it was nearly time for me to wrap up and go home, an unsettling sound began to emerge. What is that? I heard a soft noise in the distance, like tiny wet footsteps. They played on the edge of my senses. I froze, listening intently. The footsteps echoed and pattered in the distance. As I focused more closely on the noise, it grew clearer and more distinct with each passing moment. At first, I dismissed it as my imagination or just the sound of the running water, blaming the tiredness that clung to me like a second skin. But the steps persisted drawing nearer, a deafening presence in the otherwise silent room. The sound stopped a few seconds later, and it was time for me to get done for the night. I grabbed my stuff, but before I locked up, I decided to do a last run-through, just to make sure everything was okay. I slowly approached the pool doors to have a last look inside. I shined my flashlight through the glass door and in the shadows. The light reflected back at me, but I could see just enough to make out what was on the other side. Instantly, I froze in a wave of crippling fear at what I saw in front of me. Tiny, wet footsteps started to materialize on the cold and broken floor. They looked like they were coming out of the empty pool and were heading towards the door, but they suddenly stopped midway and disappeared. My heart started pounding as I tried to find an explanation for what I was seeing. I couldn't come up with any logical reason that would explain what I saw. I wanted to get out of there, and I wanted to get out of there fast. I rushed towards the door. With trembling hands, I reached for my keys, fumbling in the dark, my breathing heavy. My panic grew stronger and stronger as I ran for the door, rapidly checking behind me, in case it was following. 
The corridor felt longer than ever, but I finally reached the end and unlocked the exit. I swung the door open, escaping into the empty hallway that led outside. The cold night air washed over me as I stumbled outside and gasped for air. Later that night, I kept replaying the events in my mind, trying to make any form of sense out of it, and I convinced myself it wasn't real. It couldn't have been real, but I promised myself I would go back the next day to prove it. At work the next day, I returned to the pool room and sure enough, it was the same as it had always been. No signs of disturbance and no more leaking. What a relief, I thought to myself as my anxiety slowly faded. But something wasn't right. As the sunlight danced on the reflective tiled floors, I noticed something just outside the pool. Tiny shimmers, one next to the other, forming tiny feet-shaped tracks now dried up. And that's when I knew I had stumbled upon something truly bizarre, but this time I didn't feel scared. I felt intrigued and somehow sad. Later that evening, curiosity took over me and I began researching the history of the school and anything I could find to help me understand what I had seen. Late into the night, I finally found it. An article from 70 years ago in the local paper. I don't even know how I found it, but it explained everything. Many years ago, there had been a factory built on the grounds where the school now stands. A tragic explosion claimed the lives of everyone inside at the time, including a father and his young daughter who was visiting him at work. The story changed the fear I had that day into a deep sadness, awakening my mind to the realization that there are things around us far beyond our understanding. To this day, the haunted pool room remains an unexplained mystery, but deep down, I know it was the young girl from those many years ago, a wandering lost soul, searching for her father.